afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us here this afternoon. We're going to let some folks trickle in here. We've got over 100 INS that have registered for today's session and um, wanted to share a couple of housekeeping notes before we get started and just to run a couple of polls. And for those of you who haven't attended one of our webinars in the past, a um, couple of things to keep in mind is that because we have so many folks that are joining us this afternoon, we do have um, you on mute. So if you wanna ask questions, we love to have as much of an interactive session as possible. So please feel free to submit any questions there on the screen and we'll get through them um, as we go through. We've got a lot to cover today. So we wanna make sure that we stick within this hour timeframe that we've allotted here. And so before we do introductions, I'm gonna launch a couple of polls just to get a sense as we're looking at the perfect there we go as we're looking at the results from the survey that we're going to share today we'll have an idea of who we have on the call with us here this afternoon so for those of you that i haven't met yet my name is janice hurley and i am the gm of bmb finder uh, i've been in the industry since about 2002 i think uh, originally started with bedandbreakfast.com and um, went and ran an end up in Vermont for a couple years and then went back to bedandbreakfast.com and have been with B&B Finder uh, since we acquired the business back in April. And I'm joined here today with Tim Wilson and I'll have Tim go and introduce himself while you're finishing the poll here. Hello everybody. Um, I am Tim Wilson, and I'm uh, the I get, manage the diamond collection here at BNB Finder, and I've been in this industry for 21 years now, uh, going all the way back to 1999, uh, pre.com crash and all of that. Um, and yes, I've uh, been here now with BNB Finder and Janice and Eric for just over a year, um, working hard here to turn BNB Finder into what we expect to be this industry's largest source for direct business uh, here before long. Awesome. So that, that's actually a perfect segue into a couple of things that I was going to mention as we go into some of these, um, some of the beginning slides here. So. I'm going to share the results here just so folks can see who we have on the call. So um, this is very similar to what we saw from the innkeeper responses. And one of the things to keep in mind, and we talk about this a lot, um, just to give you a quick background for those of you who aren't familiar. Uh, when we were at bedandbreakfast.com, we started to run quarterly surveys when the recession hit. And what was great about having this access is that at the time we had the largest traveler and innkeeper database and we ran quarterly surveys to get a pulse on what was happening with the innkeepers and what they were seeing as far as travel and then on the traveler side of it you know when they were planning to travel again and that just evolved over time and to really keeping a tight pulse on the industry and with all of the changes that had happened at bedandbreakfast.com with Expedia coming in and um, taking over and white labeling the site essentially and, and basically getting rid of what has been known as bedandbreakfast.com, there really hasn't been a, a broad reach into gathering data for the industry. So when COVID hit um, back in March, we decided that we needed to start to run these quarterly surveys here at BNB Finder. So a couple of things to keep in mind as we're looking at the data that we're going to be reviewing today is on the innkeeper side of it, we had about 170 properties that responded to our fall survey and an average of eight rooms. So we've got some larger properties who are joining us here today. And I'm going to hide this poll and then launch another one as well, because I always like to see what region folks are responding from. So in the survey results that we're sharing today, majority of properties, 30% of the 170 properties are located in the Northeast. Um, the biggest representation was from Pennsylvania with over 13 properties responding. And then uh, Southeast, 20% about split about the same between the Midwest and the Western regions. And the reason why I point that out is because whenever we send out these surveys, if we can get a large enough sample size in a region, 
I'm more than happy to put together survey results for your state association and present around what you're seeing in your particular area. So that's why I like to, to share that message there. So it looks like we've got about 70% of you have voted. So I'm just gonna share who we have on the call today. And this is just about the same match, um, not as much representation from the Southeast today, but certainly the Northeast um, with 43% of you on the call today, uh, where your inns are located. So when we get into the traveler results, we had 625 travelers who responded to the fall survey. And demographics is always important. We wanna make sure that these align with the travelers that we're seeing at our properties. And one thing to keep in mind as far as our traveler responses is that historically they were uh, more skewed towards in favor of b and because most of the, of the travelers that we were surveying came just from our database. So they had either stayed at a b and or had um, shown interest in, in learning more about b and And in this past survey, what I did was I actually shared this out through our social media channels and I didn't send it specifically to our traveler database because I really wanted to get a sense from the broader, um, the broader travel ba traveler base to what they have been experiencing and what their travel plans are. So I think that's important to keep in mind just as we're going through the results here uh, this afternoon. So I'm gonna kick this off with a quote that I've used in pretty much almost every single one of my presentations since, uh, since the kickoff of the conference season last year. And this back then, I shared this because we were starting to talk about all the challenges that we had with Google and um, what INS were facing as far as you know not getting the representation that they deserved on there. And then of course this you know speaks so well to where we are today. And I read this a little bit differently than it says. I, I read it as a successful human is one who can lay a firm foundation with the bricks others have thrown at them. And certainly we could have never anticipated where we would be sitting today and all of the challenges that we've had. But I think one of the great things about our industry is the tremendous amount of support and education and knowledge that is shared in the b, &B industry. And I think that, you know, making sure that you have the the opportunity to be able to reach out and connect with the resources that are available. This is an example of Acorn Internet Services. They have an incredible blog where they've been sharing a lot of data um, from the start. This was part of their, um, their planning for their, uh, for their clients and the different steps that they needed to take. And then another... Hey Janice, we can't see your screen. You can't. Nope. Okay. There we go. I think the poll must have kicked it. Okay, perfect. Thank you. All good now? Yep. Okay, great. So I'll just show you that slide again. So that's from the uh, Acorn Internet Services blog. And one thing to keep in mind too, while we're going through the session today is we are gonna send you a recording. So you'll have the recording. I attached a PDF of the slides that are attached in the handout section here. And, um, You'll also be able to, in the email, get links to some of these things that I'll be referencing as well. So no need to feel like you need to keep track and keep notes. So this actually came up in a newsletter from Q4 Launch, and I loved it because they had sent it at a time when there were a lot of innkeepers who were wondering, you know, what should I be doing? How can I prepare for travelers when they come back? And what they said, which I loved, was they asked the innkeepers, are you on the beach or are you waiting for the wave to come? Because we know that the wave of travel is going to come again. Some of you are experiencing it. Uh, Tim just was, we were talking before we get started today and he was sharing that an innkeeper out in Washington state. What was he saying about his occupancy? Um, hundred, Not an empty room for the past 120 days. It's incredible. And really what we've seen is it's definitely regional because there are some still some state restrictions in certain areas. Um, there are restrictions that 
didn't exist, you know, a couple months ago. Um, I think a great example of that is I'm planning to go out to Massachusetts for my niece's wedding and the first of October. And when I went to book it, uh, they just put a new restriction in place as of August 1st that you have to fill out a travel form uh, upon arrival to the state and that you have to have a negative COVID test, a proof of it within 72 hours of arrival. And that's something just new as of August 1st. So certainly there's a lot that plays into properties who've had you know, great occupancies and then others who had a loss of business. And I added this slide in. We actually presented this uh, during the ALP Dev Day a couple weeks ago. And this, uh, this article came across my email and I had to put it in here and share it because it reminded me of a few years back when I was presenting for betterbreakfast.com. I remember there was a, I was traveling in, in Northern California and saw this car in a parking lot that basically had a sticker on it that said, you know, this is a B and B. And we've had so many challenges in our industry with us identifying to travelers what it was a true BMB experience. And now more than ever, we're going to share some of this in some of the statistics, is our communication to the traveler is more important than ever of what their experience is when they're staying at your inns. And so when this came across, this actually, the, the source is at the bottom. It came from a, a UK uh, newsletter, and it was about Jeep and they are launching this new um, staycation and they're launching a new a new jeep model and as i was reading it <laughs> this i had to put this sentence in there because as you can see they have this hanging tent system and you can win a stay with the motel that is offering dinner which literally this is the motel the jeep with the tent on top and then they say bed and breakfast and 24-hour concierge to guests so if we didn't have a big enough challenge to begin with, with vacation rentals and everything else, now we have Jeeps calling themselves bed and breakfast as well. So thought just, just a little humor there for you this afternoon, because every time I see something like that, I think, you know, here's another opportunity for us to be able to talk to travelers and explain who we are and what we do and the experiences that y'all create for them. So we're going to jump right in to the innkeeper responses and um, the just to give you an idea of the layout of this presentation i'm going to share um, the data both from the innkeeper and the traveler surveys and then i've got some great things some feedback that innkeepers have shared with some ideas and things that they're doing at their properties so uh, maybe you can take some of that and um, then on the traveler side some trends as well so asking um, first off from the innkeepers who responded to the survey if they had received cancellations due to COVID. And what was interesting I thought about in this, this fall survey is that back in May, 44% of the properties who responded said that 75% or more of their future bookings had canceled. And that's down to 27% in the survey that we just ran. And we are starting to see this, um, this trend and from the innkeepers that we spoke with as well, that they are seeing fewer cancellations. Um, some no increase in cancellations at all, and um, there is still a percentage, and I think a lot of this is demographic, where they've had all of their um, future bookings canceled. So with most properties having bookings canceled within 60 days of arrival, so we ask properties, um, if you're seeing travelers cancel, what percentage are canceling? Um, in the timeframes and most of them within that 60 days. So what's really important is, and you're gonna see this in the traveler responses, is making sure that your cancellation policy is flexible. Um, you've seen this across every form of travel, lodging, flights, everyone is talking about no cancellation policy, no fees to cancel. So we asked innkeepers what they're doing um, with their cancellation policies, which I'll share with you. So the highest percentage uh, canceled some travel plans when we asked the travelers, are you changing your travel plans to see if it aligned with what the innkeepers were seeing? And the travelers who canceled all future plans, that was up 6% over May. Um, 
and then some of them had canceled some future plans and i think a lot of this contributes to the fact that there were there have been consistently a lot of unknowns and a lot of changes with um, different regulations and travelers not being sure um, if they were going to be able to travel or not and when we asked the innkeepers what they were doing for the cancellation policy they uh let's see 41 percent said that they cancel as needed with a with a full refund and what we've been hearing a lot of from different ends is that they're really trying to work with the travelers and they are open to issuing either a gift card or a credit for a future stay um, or reviewing on a case-by-case -case basis so if you've done anything to adjust your cancellation policy you want to make sure that it's really clear in your booking process and that it's clear in any of the communication that is going out to travelers and i'm going to share some of the examples and some of the feedback that we got from the travelers so uh this is from the innkeeper survey where innkeepers had shared some other ideas of things that they were doing that didn't necessarily um, wasn't represented on the choices that they were given and i thought they were interesting so i wanted to share them uh, one property modified their cancellation policy to allow people to cancel up to three days prior to their arrival uh, one changed from two weeks to 48 hours so again that flexibility and um, also, there's a 24-hour cancellation rule during April and May with no fees assessed. So generally, during your busy season, you have a more strict policy, but a lot of properties were loosening those up. For travelers who booked prior to COVID, giving 100% credit to be used by the end of the year. So it's really important when you're thinking about your cancellation policy, what you can do really to retain those travelers so that they can come back for another stay in the future and then retaining that uh, revenue as well. So on the traveler side of it, we asked, you know, are you still planning to travel? When it's again deemed safe to travel, how likely are you? And one of the things that I think is really hopeful in this response is that the clearly 50% said, absolutely, we plan to travel, we can't wait and the percentage of travelers who said you know they they're likely um they didn't want to delay their their plans the majority of the travelers who you can see who are on the left side of the screen are either currently traveling or planning on traveling and it's a much smaller percentage who are saying you know we're going to hold back we're not ready to travel yet and we're not comfortable with that and you know i'm one of those travelers who started to travel this summer you know i spend the majority of my life on the road and going out and visiting all of you at conferences and this has been the longest i've gone since 2002 not visiting with innkeepers in person and finally you know a couple months ago i said you know I, it, it's time i need to go out and it was my birthday in july so i went down to one of my favorite properties in san antonio uh, that actually has my favorite tub and that's why i chose them but uh i went down and I think what was really interesting is you know even as someone who is a seasoned traveler like myself I was still really curious you know what what's the experience going to be like and I've stayed both in B&Bs and I've stayed in a hotel over the summer and I can say that you know from my experience the the pre-arrival communication was key and you'll see that in the traveler responses and it really helped ease some of those concerns that I had, you know, to different parts of the country where people are traveling. Um, I have friends that have been going out and traveling and trying to go to as many national parks. There's different areas where folks, you know, not as many folks are wearing masks. And so, you know, it all depends on the comfort level of the traveler. So that the things that were important to me were communicated to me ahead of time. And then upon arrival, seeing it executed so professionally i never felt unsafe i always felt really comfortable i could relax and then i decided to fly to go visit a friend in nashville and that experience was was great as well i flew southwest and from the minute that i got to the airport you know it, it did feel a little bit like a sci-fi movie but you know 
I never felt unsafe. And I think that it's something that we're going to continue to see is that, you know, will we ever get back to what it was pre pandemic, pre COVID, you know, that's still yet to be, you know, unknown. But what we do know is that abs travelers are starting to travel again and getting more comfortable with it. We're going to see these numbers go up. So for the properties, um, we asked, you know, are you starting to see more reservations? Um, and have you started to receive bookings again? Again, this is really promising. 90% of the ings that responded said, yes, we are starting to see more reservations. And that was actually up 55% since our spring survey, which is great because we're continuing to see that trend. So I wanted to launch a poll for everyone who's on with us today just to see if this is resonating towards what you're seeing as well. And what I what I like to do and what I will do um, with this data is go back and tie it to where the properties who say, yes, we're seeing an increase in bookings and we're seeing more reservations, how that aligns geographically and also with the different styles of properties that you have. Because you know, and we're going to share um, some of this from what the traveler's looking for, but, you know, ends with private entrances and um, ends that are communicating all of their safety measures and um, how they're, how they've changed up their breakfast, several other things. So let's share these. And it's, it's very close to what we saw on the poll. So that's great. Okay. Can you still, can you see my screen? Yep. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I would just say those poll results uh, that we just did there are pretty are pretty aligned with you know just people I'm talking with too and kind of hearing the different stories from di different ends out there. It's it's you know I was going to say more like 60 40 that seem to be seeing more business than they had been. 40% uh, still not seeing as much, which is pretty close to what we saw here in the poll. Yep, absolutely. And you know, going back to, to what we said at the beginning and being so fortunate in the industry that we are is for the properties who have been seeing more travelers, they're getting the experience of what it's like to operate. You know, certainly the property that you spoke to in Washington earlier today, you know, they they are diving right into it and they're learning what it's like to to operate at a higher occupancy. Some properties have to pull back on their occupancy and well, say only have 50%, but they're 100% of their 50% occupied. So I think there's that as well. Yeah, go ahead, Tim. The one interesting thing that the property I was talking about today was talking about was the challenge in the staffing uh, right now, because it's still so difficult to kind of predict, you know, what's the op occupancy going to be like, because the reservations are coming in seemingly more last minute. So it's hard to, you know, schedule staff to accommodate all the guests. Uh, and then in this property's case, he was just telling me how they're having to turn over rooms so fast and they've had some new staff come on board that, you know, they're having to really watch how they are cleaning, uh, in particular, kind of all the cleaning standards that they are operating under uh, because they've got new people. And so uh, what he told me, which, which I thought was pretty interesting, is that they're, they, they borrowed this, I guess, technique from another inn that they met at one of the PI or AIHP conferences, but they're actually to try to ensure that their cleaning staff are properly cleaning all the rooms to the to the level of standard that their guests expect and that their brand supports um, they're actually hiding something in the room uh, to see that if the person who's cleaning the room you know finds this hidden easter egg if you want to call it that in the room as they're cleaning uh, just to make sure that they are that thoroughly cleaning the rooms i thought that was pretty interesting wow that that is Definitely a great idea. And in staffing, I'm glad that you brought that up because that has been a challenge for a lot of properties, even pre-COVID, that are in more rural areas. Or, you know, I certainly experienced it when I was up in Vermont and then um, in other resort towns or resort areas where lodging had become a challenge because of short-term rentals. So I think that's definitely something that that we should follow up on and share any kind of support and, and connect with ALP and some state associations on, you know, some things that they can do to help different ideas of, of how to, to deal with the, the staffing. 
So when we ask the innkeepers, what months are your guests booking? So certainly winter travel has increased since May. That's what we've seen. So travelers are, are a little more confident about booking a little bit more in the future. I think a lot of um, with the winter travel as well is seeing if you're in a ski destination where some of the resorts are starting to announce that they will be opening for the season. I know that was a big concern whether or not that was going to happen. And um, a lot of them have announced that they are, of course, with, you know, with new guidelines and some needing to make reservations, things like that. Um, certainly fall travel is is up, which is great. As Real we're quick heading on, into the, that. on the skiing comment, Janice, just yeah. again, kind of from my experience. So I, I live in Colorado and I have a season pass for skiing at Vail Resorts. And last year when they shut the mountains down in March, you couldn't use your season pass any longer. And it's, you know, it's almost a $700 season pass. And Vail Resorts ended up issuing me, I, I was only able to go one time last year and they issued refunds to people or credits, I guess, based on the number of times that people went. But I ended up getting almost a $500 credit towards my season pass this year uh, because I only used it one time last year. And uh, and to your point, yeah, they're now making people make reservations this year to go skiing. And, and so there's definitely some adjustments there for sure. Yeah. And I think that's great too, because it also aligns with the concept of innkeepers giving a gift card or a credit for a future stay, because the traveler wanted to stay with you and they want to have that to look forward to. So that's a completely acceptable way to handle a cancellation and say, you know, we can't wait for you to come back and to have that, that, um, that trip that you were anticipating on. So when we ask the travelers, this is from the innkeeper side of it, when you're planning on, on booking, we ask travelers, you know, when are you planning, what months are you planning your next vacation in? And December uh, was up 15% from May. So I think, you know, this is again around, you know, the holiday season. And this was something that when I was at the, the Inn at the Round Barn up in Vermont, you know, I grew up in New England. I had always stayed at home during the holidays. I never traveled, but our, our holiday season at the Inn was one of the most popular seasons that we had. And I think travelers are starting to think about that. You know, where, where are we gonna be starting to have the conversations around? Where are we gonna be spending our holidays? And then, also, when you look at the statistics from travelers who are booking um, March 2021 and in the future past that, that's actually up 18% from the statistics that we saw in back in May. So again, that's really, really promising that they're looking to book future travel. So for travelers who hadn't booked, we asked, um, when do you plan to book your next vacation? So Already, um, already traveled and planning more. Oh, that's the one that I just shared. Okay, so for future bookings, have you received, um, for the future bookings you've received since COVID, how far are your guests traveling? And I, the reason why I wanted to share this one is because we see it across the board. We see it in marketing that other sectors of the travel industry are doing talking about one tank getaways, staycations, uh, in certainly are seeing a lot of local travel. And the property that I stayed in in San Antonio, uh, I wanted to share that with you for a couple of reasons. One, because of what my experience was like, but two, because I was talking to one of the guests when I was there and, you know, said, you know, we're just chatting and said, oh, you know, where are you from? And I said, oh, we're just from Austin. We're just down, you know, for the night. And he's like, oh, I actually live in San Antonio. And I was like, oh, you live here and you're staying at this property. He's like, yeah, I just, I wanted to get away. And so I thought, you know, I, I'll, I'll go a couple blocks away. But because people have been in their homes for so long, even going to stay even a few blocks away or within a drive is getting away. And then he shared with me that his friends, he said, oh, funny, you're from Austin. Friends of mine are up staying in Austin for the night. So I went from Austin to San Antonio, they went from San Antonio to Austin. And we're seeing this, you know, as, as a growing trend. So in your marketing, being able to go in and target based on the location of your, of your travelers, running specials to travelers who've stayed with you or guests that have stayed with you in the past that are within this radius of your property 
is definitely something to think about. It looked like you wanted to share something. I was just gonna say, yeah, and, and maybe kind of from a blogging standpoint too, you can write, you know, blogs about why you're, maybe you're, you know, I don't know, within 150 miles of a major metropolitan area and folks are not traveling internationally these days. Folks are not, you know, really getting on planes these days to travel leisurely too often anyway, uh, but they are still wanting to get away. And so, you know, through some, you know, good keyword research, there you go. Uh, you know, targeting the one tank getaways from Austin is, is one that we recently did. But um, in my previous job, uh, when I was a consultant with White Snow Marketing, we used to work with a lot of our clients, you know, who maybe were just outside of a bigger city and we would do, you know, top 10, you know, reasons to, you know, check out, you know, this area if you're coming from this area. And so um, we found a lot of success with, you know, highlighting that kind of getaway uh, even before the pandemic. And so I have to think that it would be as successful, if not more here during the pandemic. Yeah, absolutely. And, and looking for opportunities with your own property and to be able to get out, um, these messages through your blogs or through your email list, and then also looking for opportunities with anybody that you are using as a marketing channel. So with BMB Finder, Tim mentioned that this is um, a one tank getaway from Austin that we did back in August, and we actually are going to have a monthly series. The next one we're doing is going to be one tank getaways from New York City. And what we did was exactly what Tim said. You know, we looked at our traveler base and we saw where they were located geographically through our analytics and we can say okay we have a high concentrations of travelers who live in the new york city area so we know one tank getaways are popular so we're going to write a blog article and we're going to feature inns that are in and around that area and that's exactly what we did with austin and then we take this it's on the site it's great for seo and then also we share it out through all of our social channels so so stay tuned for the for the upcoming destinations that we'll be highlighting and i put this in here just because I'm clearly a fan of quotes, but when I was putting together this presentation for ALP, I saw this and I thought this is fantastic because the single biggest problem with communication is the illusion that it has taken place. And I think so often we think, oh yeah, I, I communicated that so well. Like, of course the guest knows what I'm doing at my property, but do they know? And have you communicated as clearly as possible? Because when we look at the statistics, and we ask travelers, whoops, let me go in here. We ask travelers, um, whoops, go back. Okay, we ask them for future travel, where are you more likely, oops, I think I need to go back even one more. Nope, that's it. Um, where are you more likely to book your stay? 70%, now keep in mind, this is the larger traveler base that is, not just our email database and it's great to see and we are seeing this trending in a lot of marketing right now is the smaller stays so looking for the inns the bnbs um hotel i wish i i split that out between boutique hotel and a larger hotel slash resort um and and vacation rentals so that that smaller experience the the stay safe stay small uh concept is definitely trending And what's the most important things when travelers are looking to book? And this segues right into how you're communicating what you're doing at your properties to accommodate this. So um, by and large, the, the cleaning of the property, um, regularly sanitized public areas, um, face masks required for staff, um, that cut off, but it says face masks required for staff in public areas, which is what um, most properties are doing. Um, you see it in restaurants as well. When you enter the restaurant, you have to have your mask on. When you sit down at your table, you can take your mask off. Uh, sanitized linens, face masks required for guests. Uh, contactless check-in and check-out is definitely something that is um, is essential for a lot of travelers. They they want to be able to to arrive, not need to um, to necessarily connect um, right away. And so if you offer these things, it's how are you communicating that? So when we ask properties, if you're busy right now, despite COVID, what do you attribute the reason to be? And 80% of the properties who responded said, because they communicated the safety measures 
to the travelers. And also we're in a remote location, that certainly helps. Um, so there are things that you can control and things that you can't control. Certainly your location, you can't necessarily control that. Um, if you don't have private entrances, which was the, the third um, biggest reason why they thought had attributed to the increase, you can't control that, but you can control the communication and how clearly you're communicating all these things that you're doing um, for the guest. So when we ask INS what they're doing and compared it to the travelers, 93% of the property said they have hand sanitizer available. That's great. On the traveler side of it, it wasn't as important. I think it's just assumed right now that, that folks have that. Um, but when you look at what INS are doing to what travelers said were important to them, it almost aligns perfectly. And again, that's just such a, a reassuring piece of data to see that what travelers are looking for, INS are providing. So it really comes down to communicating that clearly. And I loved, about a month and a half ago, two months ago, I was approached by a publication here in Texas. It's Texas Lifestyle Magazine. And they knew that smaller lodging was trending and they wanted to start a series about different inns and B&Bs in and around the state of Texas. And they wanted to partner with B&B Finder and have us share with them different inns that you know we recommend and as i started to the conversation with them what was great to be able to say to this journalist was you know our industry has done so much to to share and communicate and to get prepared for how they were going to share this information with travelers and she was blown away at the level of professionalism it's something that she completely didn't expect. So it made me realize, you know, you think of the average traveler and they think of, you know, big resorts or hotel chains having these big marketing teams that have all of the money that they can to spend on marketing and getting out these messages. And then you think of all of you and the smaller ends and the small budgets and the cut budgets that we have in marketing. And yet with all of that, the, the great job that a lot of you have been doing in adding pages to your websites. Um, um, I'd say a larger percentage now um, than ever before when, and I see a lot of different websites a day, this pop-up comes up almost immediately. If they don't have a pop-up, they have something right on their homepage calling out, this is what our update is. And because it's ch ever changing, you know, making sure you have access to easily update that. If you have a page that's dedicated on your website to this, make sure that on any of your marketing channels where you have the opportunity to share this information with guests, that you're doing so. So this is something that we launched at BMB Finder a few weeks ago. And this is when you log into your dashboard, you now have the ability to add an, a link to that landing page, your dedicated landing page. And then on your listing, you can see that there is a banner that will show that says, click here for our added health and safety measures. So that's just another way that you can clearly communicate to your guests. And then we also added in the safety features and we align these safety features with the responses from the travelers. So you can go in any of the safety features that you've enabled that you're in. When you select those, those actually show up in the main filter on all of our search pages on the site. So if you haven't taken time to go in and update that, definitely you know, take a few minutes to go in and get that published. And also, and that goes for any directories or any marketing channels that you're listing on. This is something um, that TripAdvisor had put into place. And so if you have a listing with them, I, I don't think that this is um, just for properties who have a business listing, you'd need to check with them. Um, I think it's available, hopefully, for, for everybody that is listed on the site. And update your property description. So if you have any copy that is on any of the, the marketing sites that you do here on BMB Finder, this is an example um, of Sage Hill Inn down in Kyle. This is actually Eric's property. And they went in and took the, the first part of their property description to go in and put an update uh, in there as well. So from the, the results from the survey, we asked innkeepers 
what are some of the things that you're doing uh, that you're doing to to differentiate yourselves during these times. And I put in the number of years that the properties have been operating because oftentimes I'll share it ideas and you know sometimes I'll get a little grumbling from the from the innkeeper audience and they'll be like, oh yeah, well they, you know, they're brand new, they've got all this energy or this or that. And uh, so I thought, you know, now when I share examples, I'm gonna put how long the property's been in business. So Beach went in, uh, who's been in business for over 20 years, shared this and they said, um, they're offering new recipes and great photos, new specials and packages. So these are things that they're doing on their website to engage with the traveler and to communicate what they're, what they're doing. And one thing I need to share and point out, because we're gonna talk about this, is it's fall. And if you're in a destination where foliage is a thing, make sure you're going in and updating those seasonal photos because we're going to talk about the importance of photography now and not just on your website but making sure that you're updating it on the directories that um that you're marketing on and i say this you know half tongue in cheek because when i was at the round barn the one thing that i felt like i never had time to do was to sit down and update my photos so I can appreciate the fact that, you know, sometimes it seems like it's something so simple, but right now from where the traveler is coming from, it's really important because, um, and this is an article, I included the, the link to the source and I was, I was so grateful that this came out because when you think about, again, back to that communication and clearly communicating what you're doing, what better way to communicate than with images? because we know the three rules of marketing, people don't read, people don't read, people don't read. So if you have photos that can represent some of the things that you're doing, absolutely get those updated on your site. Um, this is an example of a photo that actually came from this article of showing how they social distance their, you know, their breakfast area, their tables, things like that. Okay, so for properties that um, aren't currently marketing, we ask them, you know, have you tapped into financial assistance? Is this something that, you know, you were able to, to receive? And we did have some international properties who responded. Um, so there was a percentage that, you know, said that they were located out of the US. They didn't have that support. Uh, certainly a lot of properties that had taken advantage of um, the loans and the paper paycheck protection for those that had staff. Um, I thought was in, what was interesting from the other comments is this property responded and said that they were a startup. So they were excluded from the relief programs that they came across. And of course, when they started planning for the property, you know, and making the investment long before COVID, but you know, that didn't matter. And they didn't have the tax, tax records to support any um, assistance grants. So again, going back to our industry and how supportive it is, you know, being able to provide information for, for all types of properties on how they can get access. Because at the end of the day, you know, Jerry Maguire, I put this in there, isn't the only one who's waiting for someone to show them the money, right? Everybody right now is looking, you know, what marketing dollars you have, how you can best use them, and, um, there are a lot of things that innkeepers shared that they've been doing that don't necessarily cost money. So I'm going to be sharing some of those with you. So on the traveler side, we asked, you know, do they have the money to travel? Have, has your job been affected? 41%, um, yes, it already had been affected. And then, you know, you look at the, the larger percentage, either they're in retirement or their job hadn't been impacted yet or they don't expect it to be impacted. Uh, I think there are certainly a lot of industries that are fortunate that have been able to continue to work from home. Um, in Austin, just, I think it's yesterday, just passed and said that 75% of offices can go back into the office environment, um, up to 75% occupancy in offices, in grocery stores, all these types of things. and you know, the hardest hit sectors, of course, are hospitality and um, and the music industry and, and some others. So there's certainly a, a demographic that aligns with our traveler demographic that um, hasn't been impacted. So 
when we asked the 42% of properties that said that they haven't changed their marketing, we asked them why. Um, and 46% said that they didn't do anything, they haven't changed their marketing. So when I mentioned, you know, not all marketing has to have a direct cost out of your pocket. When we asked innkeepers what they were doing, specials and packages and deals and discounts were the top two. And what I love about this is it gives you a great ability to be able to add in, um, you know, perceived value, to come up with different value adds, and to get really creative with how you're positioning your specials and packages, your staycation packages, um, deals and discounts. The, the Fairmount in Austin um, was a new hotel that went up. I think it's been about two years now. And they've been running almost every week a discount for locals. And I see this almost daily in my email from all different types of brands, you know, show your local ID and get, you know, 15% off your stay. I just had an in that I got their newsletter yesterday and they were, they were doing something similar to that. Um, breakfast options. When we asked the travelers, you know, when we shared with you what was important to them when they were traveling, these were the other, um, the other part of that graph that I didn't show you that were at the bottom. And the reason why I broke this out separately is because, you know, breakfast is a big part of what we do. And for travelers, there it's equally important. You know, where are they having breakfast? Do you have in-room breakfast available? Is to-go breakfast available and communicating that with um, how, you're, how you've changed your service. So definitely, as I said, time to get creative. So I highlighted some of the, the feedback that I really liked from some of the properties um, in the survey. So Wicker Park Inn out in Chicago, Illinois, been in business for 16 years. You know, they put together a breakfast in bed package and it seems so simple, right? But if we know that breakfast is important to travelers, putting together even something as simple as a breakfast in bed package has been really successful for them. And you know, this is something that we offered at the Round Barn, but for years we never advertised it because my breakfast chef never really wanted to do it. It was too much work. So do, putting this together, I loved it. Um, Devonfield Inn, the, the inn has actually been in business for much longer than two years. These are new owners that took over two and a half years ago. That's out in Western Mass. Um, they're fortunate enough to be on 32 acres. So they put together a yoga and a concert series on the lawn this summer that they said was really successful for them. Um, there's another property that's here in Texas that is um, Barron's Creekside Inn. And what they did, Daniel, the owner, shared with me, which I thought was brilliant. This was very early on. This was in March, um, end of March. They have a lot of individual cottages and buildings on their property. And they also have this great space where guests would gather in the evenings to have cocktail hour and um, to have some snacks. And they, of course, couldn't do that. And still can't, I believe. But what he did was he got a pickup truck and had a band in the back of the pickup truck. And every evening, he would drive through the property and guests would come out on their porches and they'd be having their, you know, their wine and their snacks in their socially distant space. And there would be the music coming through. You see this with drive-ins that are happening. There's a lot of, um, of drive-ins that are coming up. A friend of mine, there's one in Chicago. There's now one in Atlanta. There's one on Cape Cod in Yarmouth. Um, there's several of them popping up. So if you have something like this in your area, you could even put together a package around, you know, come and, and have a, have a drive-in um, concert series. Another thing that Devin Field did that I thought was brilliant too is they added this pop-up where they really highlighted not only, you know, do we have all the space and we're doing the yoga and the concert series, but they created specific hikes. These are hikes around in and around the Berkshires and they're providing this guests ahead of time, uh, this information for their guests ahead of time. Um, Palmer House Inn, which is another set of new owners, two and a half years out in Falmouth, Math. They um, shared that they're doing shrimp wrapped, <laughs> shrink wrapped cookies, not shrimp wrapped, shrink wrapped cookies. And um, that's great because, you know, 
cookies is one of the things when I go to the inn, it's one of the first things I do is I go over to that cookie jar. So you can still get your cookies, they're shrink wrapped, uh, offering breakfast on the porches and decks that they have. I love this idea of putting together a picnic basket. Um, they're in Falmouth, they have the ferry that goes out to the vineyard. So, you know, guests are also short on time still. So being able to put together these packages where they can come and say, okay, I can book this, I can book an experience that is going to be a safe experience and it's going to be provided by the property. And they also enhance their elopement and small wedding packages. And this is something, if you're an inn that has any type of wedding facilities, what we've seen, especially early on, is that a lot of weddings have gotten postponed to next year. Um, my niece, who was planning on a 200 person wedding in Massachusetts, she's still having it, but now it's down to 50 people. I imagine it might get cut even smaller you know, as it gets closer. But what it essentially is now is a micro wedding. And this micro wedding concept is trending across the board. So if you offer weddings at your property and you've made changes and you're doing micro weddings, and I'm gonna share another idea, uh, make sure that you're getting that out to your base. Um, if your property is not as busy as it is um, typical right now, what do you attribute to that? And I'd be interested to find out, and I'm gonna run, I think I've got one more poll in here that's based around this. And this is around state regulations because for the properties who aren't seeing an increase in business, it really has been due to state guidelines. And I think the ever-changing state guidelines. Um, and again, things that you can't change your location. Some of them are located in a city. And unfortunately, they're all of the wildfires um, and weather challenges that we've had um, over the past summer have definitely affected um, a lot of the, of the member ends as well. So let's just close this poll and share the results. And so for the properties who are on the call today, um, majority of you are allowed to take guests, which is great. So it's lightening up in some of the areas. So if you are accepting future reservations, which all of you are, how are you communicating that to your guests? This um, was from one of our member properties. Um, I think this was Aldrich. Yeah, Aldrich Guest House. And they have been so incredibly creative with the way that they're communicating out to their, their guests and their travelers that they're open for business. And every time I get one of their newsletters, I just get so excited because it's so creative and it's engaging and I wanna read about it. And I think what was great about a couple of things that they shared, you know, guests have been consistently asking, you know, what can we do to help? And such simple things, go out, like us on Facebook, follow our social media, you know, post photos, leave reviews, leave reviews of past days, um, forward our newsletter on to friends and, you know, tag a friend and coming up with different ideas on how they can they can get that reach more broadly into social media. And remind them to keep your mind and that they can book with confidence. Um, that, you know, share out those safety measures in all of your, all of your um, newsletters. This is a property that, um, again, early on, this was back in March, and I thought this was so genius, and I've seen more of this too, is this property out in uh, Lawrence, had a wedding business and their wedding business had basically gone away till next year. So they decided to open up a drive-through wedding. And I've seen this more and more. And you think if it trends, if, if it works in Vegas, you know, why can't it work in other parts of, of the country? Here in Austin, Austin City Limits, which is a TV show that I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with, they also had to get creative because they haven't been able to have any shows at the venue um, since this all started. And so what they started to do is to rent out, you can have 30 minutes and they, they have a day that's dedicated to it. So they have staff there who does cleaning in between. And you have 30 minutes and you can get married on the stage at Austin City Limits with the, uh, with the backdrop that's normally on the, the, the TV show when the musicians are playing. And I don't know how many micro weddings they've done at this point, but it's been really popular. So, 
with all of this, you know, continue to expand our reach, calling all travelers. So what we're doing here at BNB Finder is really has been part of our core um, our core message since the beginning and something that we've carried over from our experience at, at bedandbreakfast.com. And it's really to look for the opportunities where we have the biggest reach. So we have a great relationship with the Wheel of Fortune. We have, I've been working with them personally since 2006. So if you are a member of BNB Finder and you have video, please respond to the email that we're gonna be sending you with the follow-up of this. And let me know that you have video because Wheel of Fortune started taping again in July. And because we have such a great relationship with them, we go through and we look at their taping schedule and we decide, okay, here's all the taping schedules and here's all the different theme weeks for when we're going to be sharing this out. So what I'm gonna show you all is this. So we have a lot of properties that are in these different theme weeks, but right here, Theme week airing October 12th through the 16th is officially bed and breakfast week. So every night for five days, they're gonna highlight a different BNB Finder member. And what's fantastic about this is they take the whole set and they dress it like a bed and breakfast and they talk about it the whole time, you know, BNB, BNB, and then they show a different BNB. And so it's great, not only just for BNB Finder and for us to get more exposure for our members, but it's great for the industry because they're talking about and they're showing to millions of people what a true BNB experience is. And um, I'll be sending out, you know, when we get ready to air date, we're working on all of the, the promotions that we're doing as well. Something else I wanted to share with you is if you attended one of our previous sessions several months ago, I sort of gave a little bit of a, uh, a hint that we might be working with another TV show and um, that actually came to fruition and they started taping again. And you might, I'm not a big TV game show watcher, so I, I sort of remember this show, but the show is 25 words or less. And it's actually a show that had been around for years and then went away and they brought it back. And Meredith Vieira is actually the host, hostess of the show. And so we had our first air date and I'm going to be posting this on our blog because unfortunately when I play this, I don't think that you can hear this. Yeah, we can't hear it. And so this is, um, this is what was shown on TV, highlighting B&B Finder, talking about all of the ins that list on the site, showing going to a listing, how you find a property, and what's fantastic is this being shared out with all of their travelers, not only on the show, but then they're sh sharing it out through all of their social media channels as well. And so another just great opportunity to reach as many travelers as we can through all different markets. And again, not just tapping into the travelers who are already familiar with us, because you know there's been a statistic that's gone around for years of how many travelers um, have never stayed at a B&B. Do you remember what that was, Tim, from all those years back? Oh, I, I was afraid you were gonna ask me that. I don't remember <laughs> what the actual statistic is, but I remember talking about it over the years and it was, it was a yeah. large percentage. Yes, and that's, that is, you know, to me, that is what I have focused on because we want to turn as many non b, &B goers into b, b goers as possible. So anytime we can find opportunities where we can reach out and we can reach more properties uh, or more travelers, we do that. What we're planning on for fall and winter, this is something that I've been trying to launch for the last several months and have had too many other competing priorities, but I'm excited that we're gonna be launching the best breakfast contest because we are going to be celebrating in the month of October, not only with the week on Wheel of Fortune, but we're bringing back International BNB Month. And that is to celebrate all of you, all that you've done for the industry, for travelers and guests to be able to get involved in that. Uh, we'll also be relaunching our top 10 um, awards in different categories. And that information will be shared out with members in our upcoming innkeeper newsletter. So stay tuned for that. 
and stay informed about what's happening. The easiest way to do that, I do this, I highly recommend it. If you do anything today, just one quick little thing, go on to Google Alerts and set yourself up an alert. And I have mine set up, it sends it to me once a day and you can set it up for different terms. So I have, you know, bed and breakfast, b, &B Finder, b, &B COVID, all these different um, keywords. And then Google sends me a summary each day with all of the articles that were shared out that are specific to those keywords. And I'm telling you, it's been crucial for me to be able to, to stay in touch with what's happening. And a lot of these things that have come across, like the, the Jeep example that I gave and the, the photography example, those came over in Google Alerts. So great, great way, easy, quick for you to stay, um, to stay connected. And stay connected with local media. You know, local media in, in the beginning, nobody really wanted to cover anything but COVID because it was so crucial for them to be really, you know, getting the information about, you know, what do we need to do? What are the different protocols? Now, local media wants to start talking about other things and even national media, they want to start talking about something other than, uh, other than COVID and other things that are, that are happening. So, you know, connect with your local, with your local um, media and share any stories that you have. Uh, B&Bs for Vets is coming up on November 10th. This is an initiative from ALP, our national association. It's a fantastic program. I participated when I was at the Round Barn and you can choose to donate one room or more than one room, um, whatever you're comfortable in doing. And I'm telling you the amount of, I think we did two rooms when we were at the Round Barn. This, this was a slow part of our season. It's stick season in Vermont during November. So it's before the, it's when the leaves have fallen before the snow comes. So we had more rooms that we, um, we could donate. And it was unbelievable to be communicating with these vets who were interested in staying, even after we had booked up, you know, still fielding calls and talking to them and, you know, inviting them back and then extending a discount if they wanted to come back and stay at another date. And then having the opportunity to host them at the end and watching, you know, the, the two groups that had come, you know, being able to, to sit and get to know each other and share stories. It's really just a fantastic uh, program. So I definitely encourage you to engage in it. And we're gonna be working with ALP to help get the message out about that as well. And remembering as we go through this, I know we're a little bit over time, but I think it's really important for us to continue to remember that we are all in this together. And we do everything that we can to help support our national and state associations because having this ongoing um, education and being able to stay up to date on what's happening in different states is really important. The Book Direct movement, which was started by um, Lisa from ACORN and back then PI and ALP, um, AIHP, which is PI and AIHP are now ALP, which is our one national association. And this movement was specifically put together to educate innkeepers on what you can do to help change some of the things that are happening. Um, if you haven't gone on to their site, it's bookdirect.education, and they're constantly sharing what's new, what's happening. This was something that was posted recently um, in the Google antitrust hearing, which you might have heard some things about. They were calling out because a congressional hearing was scheduled for that day and they wanted to get as many innkeepers involved as possible. So absolutely, if you haven't had a chance to go onto their site, take a few minutes and you can sign up for their newsletter where they'll send you any updates that they have um, that are ongoing. So in asking the innkeepers, what more, what more can we do to help support each other? These are some of the responses that came back from the, the other section of those questions. And um, this inn had lost their maintenance cleaning man of 18 years. They're out in rural Southern West Virginia. So this ties in again perfectly, Tim, with what you know you had pointed out about staffing. So I think it's something that we should definitely address and, and get out resources or any resources that we can. Because when I think about staffing too, um, I don't know as much about rural West Virginia um, as I do about, you know, Cape Cod and some of the other um, really popular New England destinations. But a lot of those destinations heavily relied on having 
international um, exchange programs um, coming in and that's what they would use for their summer help and not having that because of travel restrictions um, was a big challenge and also not really knowing and being able to predict what the demand was going to be. Uh, emphasize the difference between a full service B&B and Airbnbs um, with bedandbreakfast.com and now VRBO gone. Uh, we need a voice more than ever. That was uh, feedback from one of the members. Continue advice on marketing, advertising, absolutely. And continue spreading the word B&Bs are the safest place to stay, not only during the pandemic, but any time that travelers want a clean, safe place to stay and gourmet heats. So that ties back into really everything that we were saying is, is finding the biggest platforms that we can and the biggest opportunities to share out that story about who we all are and what you all do to make this industry possible. And I know it can be really overwhelming at times because there's so much information and there was an innkeeper who said to me a couple months ago, I think it was a couple months, month and a half, just basically said like, I can't take in any more information because there's so much, which is great because there is that much information. But I think when you're feeling that way, you know, think about when you go to conference and you set those goals for yourself. I'm sure the goals that you have for yourself today look a lot different than they did from March. So just reevaluating that and just picking some small digestible things that you can do where you feel like you're actually making progress and continuing to share those out. So we are over time by about 11 minutes, but if there are any questions that folks have that we want to take now, we can. And if there are ones that come in after, we can always share out those answers in the follow-up email as well. Um, there were a couple comments that came in through the questions. Um, one that was completely valid is in one of our poll questions, we were asking if folks were able to take guests or not. And uh, two, two folks pointed out that they are allowed to take guests, but there are certain restrictions on certain guests coming from certain states. Um, yes. And so thought that was valid to mention that while you may be able to take guests, you may not be able to take them from all states. Um, so I thought that one was a very valid comment there for sure. Absolutely. Um, That's perfect to share. Thank you. One of the other questions, too, uh, was just asking whether these results were year over year or if they were from past months. And I think I responded to all, but just in case, just wanted to say that these were comparing results from our most recent survey against our May survey. So uh, just a couple of months uh, here during the pandemic. It wasn't year over year comparisons. Yes. Yep. This is this particular um, survey was compared to our spring survey. Mm -hmm. Yep. So in, in just a little bit more background on those restrictions and not being able to take guests from certain states. So when I was mentioning that I was going back for my niece's wedding, when I did the search, which they may have taken it down actually. Oh no, it's thinking. Um, so here it says, you know, Massachusetts may have travel restrictions. And what was really interesting when I dug into this further and the reason why I want to share it to you is because I thought Massachusetts did a really great job at communicating what these new restrictions were and you know I went on the state of Texas where I live now and have lived since 2003 or four I think we moved the company here but um, I went on to the state of Texas and I was on my phone and Massachusetts has a responsive site super easy to navigate as a traveler I know exactly what I need to do. They were really, you know, here was what I was mentioning, effective August 1st, all visitors and returning residents must follow these guidelines. Here's a link to the travel form that you need to fill out. And then they also talk about the COVID tests, different quarantine. So there was so much information and I felt, okay, you know, this is manageable. I know I'm gonna go get a COVID test three days before I go. And it's not necessarily that, you know, I'm gonna, you know, deplane and there's going to be somebody standing there like, you know, there would be if you were entering an international country. It's not going to be like that. You know, you have to submit the form and you have to have that proof with you. And what they say is that, you know, individuals who fail to quarantine or fail to comply with this are subject to $500 fine per day. So, you know, a lot of this, I think it's hard to police, but they're putting in these measures so that people know, you know, if, if you are asked to 
provide that proof of having the COVID test and you don't have that negative test, then you can be fined or um, that you will have to quarantine for 14 days. So I think, you know, that, you know, to your point that you, there are restrictions by state, but one other thing that they showed was that you don't have to, um, you don't have to comply with any of this if you're from a lower risk state. So in the example of Massachusetts, what they show, which unfortunately, the fortunately and unfortunately for mass, the lower risk states happen to be pretty much all of New England. And if staycations from what we saw are trending, we know that travelers interstate through New England can travel, which is great for those properties that are up there. Um, the majority of other states are considered restricted states, but for those properties, you know, that, that drive market isn't as affected. So just thought that was interesting. Were there other questions that we needed to answer now? Um, no, I think that was, uh, those were all of the main questions, yeah. Um, one other thing I would add too, you were talking about the specials and packages and deals that people are doing and, you know, talking about the fact that it doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, any kind of financial implication on you uh, where you're giving a discount or that kind of thing. It can just be the value added uh, stuff that you do. Uh, but I had, I had an old client up in Maine that used to do this package that was pretty popular that I always loved and it was very, very, very low cost, um, but it was their stargazing package. And basically what it was, was, you know, you book the stargazing package and they give you a blanket, a thermos with some hot chocolate, you know, a couple mugs and, you know, tell you the best place to go out and just look at the stars. And, you know, so low cost, but right now I think also, you know, totally appropriate and interesting to folks who are kind of looking to get away and, you know, spend some time together. And so it doesn't have to be, you know, some big offer or that kind of thing. It can be something, you know, just as simple as that. And he, he did really well with that package. So I thought, I thought that I'd share that as well. <laughs> that I would book that package. That sounds amazing. Yeah. Especially, you know, being here in Austin, I don't, I have to go pretty far out in the hill country to see any, any stars. So I love that. <laughs> That's great. Anything else that came through? Um, no, I don't have any other questions that have come in, but um, if there are any, fire away, we'll answer them. Yes. And if we miss them, we'll always include them in the follow-up email as well. So, you know, I can't thank you enough for taking time out of your day and hopefully you picked up one thing that you could implement or learned something that uh, was interesting. We're going to continue our webinar series, um, you know, depending on how things shift, you know, we'll plan on doing our next survey in um, at probably most likely at the end of, of the year to, to round out and see how things, you know, finished out and also to tap into what travelers are looking for, for um, late winter, early spring travel. So we'll be reaching out for that. So keep an eye out for that, uh, those surveys coming through. And then we'll also continue to host um, some guest speakers as well. So if you aren't currently a member of BNB Finder and you want more information, I think you figured you filled that out in the registration form. Um, we can get out those details for you and, and connect you with Tim. And for all of you who are currently members, uh, we are more than happy to meet with you, set up a one-on-one -on -one call with either Bo, um, who manages our customer experience, and um, just to go in, evaluate your listing, see if there are any opportunities that we can do um, to help get you as much exposure as possible. So uh, thank you so, so much for all of your time. Um, one other comment did just come in uh, regarding yes. b and for vets. Uh, and that's yes. just a reminder that the b and for vets program is also for spouses of vets as well. Um, so if you're talking with folks, uh, just know that it's, it's for spouses to vets as well, because they're kind of vets also, so. That's awesome. I love that program. And if there are other programs that you have um, that are similar to things like B&Bs for Vets, uh, definitely let us know. And um, I just actually had an idea that came up from that because I was thinking of all the things that we've done over, um, over the years. And um, Tim's wife is actually a school teacher uh, out in, in Cherry Creek and just outside of Denver in Colorado. 
And yep. um, he had come up with an idea several years ago that we need to bring back because especially right now with all the teachers that have been taking back students or they're teaching virtually and all of the challenges over the last several months, the end of the school year and now the beginning of this new school year, um, I think honoring teachers would be fantastic for us to do. And so we, we put together a program for that. So we need to talk after this call. Like <laughs> that could be another thing we do in October. So awesome. So awesome. thanks again, everybody. We can't wait to see you all again. I can't wait to see you in person. Uh, at any time you want to chat and have a video call, <laughs> just send me an email. I'm happy to, to see anyone at any time. All right. Awesome. Have a great afternoon, everyone. We'll talk soon. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.